Hello students, welcome to Sensevius E classes for chemistry. It is totally a different experience during this lockdown period studying chemistry using this digital media. Before we continue with the class, I need to give you some instructions and it is as soon as we finish the class, I want you to go through the textbook thoroughly. That is number one. Number two, as you read through the lines, underline the technical words. It will be helpful for you. Try to form questions on the passage that you are reading. And form questions and understand. Try to get the answers. Read the portion thoroughly. Let me tell you one thing, direct interaction with the student is very important and no video class can substitute that. But still, we will try to do our best and make use of the time very wisely. So coming to our lesson, today we are going to learn for class 12, chapter 1, the solid state. We have learned about the different states of matter. What are the different states of matter? Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, BEC. BEC is Bose-Einstein condensate. Regarding the liquid and solid, we have learnt in the previous class. Their property, the laws that follows. We call them as fluids because they have that property of fluidity. That is, they are allowed to flow, they are able to flow. Why they are able to flow? It is because of the intermolecular distances between the molecules of liquid as well as gases. Coming to the solid aspect, what makes a solid special? It is the fixed position of their components, atoms, molecules, whatever. So, the fixed position and because they have the fixed position, their intermolecular distances will be very, very less, almost nil. When we say that the intermolecular distance is nil, it means that there is maximum attraction between the molecules and the components. Because of which, they are rigid, rigid. And whenever we give some temperature to them or we heat them or whatever, they are able to oscillate. They don't leave their position. They are able to oscillate in their gain, given mean position. And all this is also because of their binding forces. All these properties that we find, fixed position, the rigidity, the oscillation, the binding forces between their atoms and molecules, it is because of their correlation between their structure and the property. This is what makes it special. Now the question is why we need to study about the solid states in detail. It is because we may have different uses of these solids in the near future. Most of us we are already using in the form of nanotechnology, in the form of supercomputers, supercomputers, super conductors, superconductors, it may be for magnetic materials, it can also be for components like polymers which are biodegradable. So because of these uses, because of all these uses, solid state, the study of solid state become important. So let us come to the general characteristics of the solid state. The state of a particular component or a matter depends mainly on the temperature and pressure. Given the temperature and pressure, the state of the substance or the matter will be decided. And to understand that, we have two forces. One is the 
intermolecular force which keeps the atoms or molecules bound together and the second force is the thermal energy the thermal energy which keeps keeps these atoms or molecules apart it is the net effect of these two opposing forces that which is going to decide what type of the matter or what state the matter should exist what are they it is the intermolecular forces as well as the thermal energy the they are the net opposing forces intermolecular forces will keep them binding together whereas the thermal energy will keep them apart so when there is a net balancing between these two opposite forces that balance will decide which state the given matter should exist now for example just now we discussed that at low temperature temperature and pressure is the topic that we or the uh, point that we have raised over here at low temperature let us say what happens at low temperature the thermal energy becomes very very low so when the thermal energy is low the intermolecular forces will play its role they will bind the atoms or molecules or the components very close to each other and then the given matter exists in solid state so what we dis discuss is temperature and pressure are the two main factors which will decide whether the given particular matter should exist in which particular state okay so continuing with the arrangement of the particle how the particles are arranged in a solid state we can classify the given particular solid into two different categories one is the crystalline substances or crystalline solid and the other one is the amorphous solid crystalline and amorphous how do you differentiate between crystalline and amorphous solid a crystalline solid will have a definite geometric shape it has got a definite geometric shape the shapes are repetitive you will find that the structures are repetitive and you find a 3d arrangement for that the position of the particles now we say that it is because of the arrangement of the particles so these particles have a accurate position and because they have an accurate position and because it is repetitive for quite a long range we say that it has a long range order long range order means it will follow a regular pattern for a long distance that is the meaning of long range order and because it has got a definite geometry definite arrangement their melting point will also be definite it will melt at a given particular temperature unless and until there is no impurity present in it so it has got a definite melting point apart from that you always you also find that it shows a typical property of an isotropy an isotropy we may call them as an isotropic what does this an isotropy stand for or explain it is the mechanical strength refractive index and electrical conductivity of the given particular crystalline solid which will be different in different direction it will be different in different direction and that property of showing different values in different direction is called as the an isotropy for crystalline substances coming to the amorphous substance it is just different from that of the crystalline how is it different here we studied that it is having a definite geometric shape but in this case it will not have a definite geometric shape no definite geometric shape is found if you see that in crystalline substance there is a repetitive 3d arrangement here we find there is no repetition in the 3d arrangement long range order you find that means there is a regular pattern in the long range here you find a short range order short range order means patterns are repeated for only a very short span whereas it cannot be taken for a very long uh, order then you have a regular pattern for only short distance that is the meaning of short range order that is a regular pattern only for a short distance or short area you will find because of all this what do you find if here we study that it has got a definite melting point here you have no definite melting point it will vary like if the melting point is assumed that it is 56 
it will start melting from maybe 55 and it will continue till 57, 58. So, it does not melt at a definite melting point. There is a range in the melting point. Just contrast to what we learned for crystalline substances and in case of isotropy, here you find a totally different property. It is isotropic. Isotropic means the properties like mechanical strength, its refractive index and the electrical conductivity. Electrical conductivity is same in all direction. So, how do you classify the given solids? We classify them as crystalline and amorphous based on the arrangement of the particle. How the particles are arranged based on that, we classify them as crystalline and amorphous. Crystalline is, they have a definite geometric shape. Repetitive 3D arrangement is there. Accurate position is there. A definite heat of enthalpy or heat of fusion we find. The regular pattern we will find for a long range. So, we call them as long range order. Because of all this, you find a definite melting point. And it shows the property of anisotropy that is, it has got different values in different direction for its mechanical strength, refractive index and electrical conductivity. Whereas for amorphous, it does not have a definite form. It does not have a repetitive arrangement. Their regular pattern is for very short distance. That is why we call them as short range order components. Because of all this, again, they do not have a definite melting point or the melting point varies in a range and isotropy is the property that it shows which is mechanical strength, refractive index and electrical conductivity which remains same in all the directions. So, that is how we classify the given particular solids on the basis of the arrangement of particles. Apart from that, you can also have some solids which exist in one state, like it may be crystalline in one state, it may be amorphous in another state. We call them as microcrystalline components, microcrystalline components. So, those are important again for, now in the previous uh, uh, usage we studied that some of them, some of us, some uh, we are using them for uh, supercomputers or superconductors. So, silicon, silicon is one such component, silicon, where we can use for photovoltaic cell and all. Coming to some examples of crystalline substances. We have NaCl quartz which falls under the category of crystalline substances whereas for amorphous substances we have glass. We can also call these amorphous substances as viscous liquid or maybe super cooled liquid also. So, that is all about the solids arrangement of the particles or based on the arrangement of the particle how we classify them as crystalline and amorphous.